Hey fishing friend, JC here with Rad and Reeling Fishing. I upload quality content all the time. Make sure you subscribe. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you different ways to rig for inshore saltwater fishing with hooks, swivels, and sinkers. This is gonna be an awesome video, so let's get to it right after this. All right guys, for all of these rigs, I'm just using braided lines so that you can see it. Um, you're gonna be using monofilament, fluorocarbon, or possibly even wire if you're fishing for toothy critters, barracuda and sharks and stuff like that. This first rig is just a free line or a weightless rig. Um, it's just got a hook tied onto the line is all. I'm gonna use this when I'm fishing in really shallow water with shrimp or greenbacks, pinfish. I use a weightless rig, a free line, very often when I am snook fishing um, around bridges in and out of current. Um, I like that bait to have as natural of appearance as possible. So you'll see me using a free line often. That is, unless I want to get my pen fish down and get him to stay on the bottom when I'm snook fishing, then I'm probably going to be using a two ounce weight on there. Or uh, sometimes I'll add a split shot if I want it to go down. It just depends on the current. But that's your free line or your weightless rig. Okay, this next, this next rig is an ocker rig. If you've been watching my videos, you see I like to fish for sheep's head this way. This is where the sinker just slides down on top of the hook. One of the main advantages of using a knocker rig, there's several advantages, but one of the things that I like is, see how it knocks? If you happen to get hooked onto a rock or some type of structure, you can basically just bounce that sinker around and, and that slack that's in there, it'll cause it to, to pull the hook off of the structure or you get that knocking effect where it helps to knock the hook off of the structure. But I like using a knocker rig for that reason. And also another reason I like using a knocker rig is when you're casting your bait and that weight is right down on the hook, you get a really accurate, you can get a really accurate and far cast with that weight that way. It's an easy way to rig also. So yeah, you're just tying that hook on and sliding the sinker on, right? So there's your knocker rig. Now with just about any of these rigs, guys, you can add swivels on to attach your braided line to your mon monofilament or whatever. This is just another, this is another version of a knocker rig here. I've got the swivel tied here, okay? So that sinker can go, only go a certain distance. And what that does is, is when this thing lands out there, you've casted it, right? Your bait lands down there. If you're in current or you got live bait, that kerner is going to want to pull your bait away this way. And so when you have that swivel on there, it basically limits the distance that your bait can travel from the sinker. So that's just kind of another version of their knocker rig. If you're not tying your leader line directly onto your braided fishing line, you can uh, use a swivel. You can limit that, uh, that distance right there. One of the things I'd like to note about a knocker rig is sometimes if you're using a small hook and a large weight, the size of the hole on this large weight will cause the weight to go over the eye of the hook. And what actually happens is the weight will slide down on the hook. There's a couple of ways that you can stop that from happening. You just take a pair of needle nose pliers and just crimp your, your weight. You can close the size of that hole. Another option is you can always add a uh, some type of bead on there. Uh, beads have a specific purpose. We'll be talking about that in a little while. So yeah, your, your knocker rig, that's just designed to get your bait down there on the bottom, as close to the bottom as possible. And like I said, I think it just makes it easier to cast when you're fishing with a knocker rig too. So next up we have what's called the fish finder rig here. And I actually added on that little bead on this one where the swivel attaches to the leader line going down to the hook. Now that bead has um, some different types of, of purposes there. Um, what I had mentioned earlier, it'll keep that sinker from sliding over the a small hook, but also it tends to protect the knot where you tied your knot. 
rather than having the sinker, the rough edge of the sinker rubbing on that, you get the uh, benefit of that bead helping to protect the knot. So, so the same advantage of using a fish finder rig like the knocker rig is that if you get hung up on some type of structure, you can jerk that sinker back and forth and that sinker will go down and it'll, you know, pull up and down on the hook and it'll help get the hook unhung from the structure. Now, one of the things that I didn't mention about the knocker rig, and the same applies with the fish finder rig, is you see how that line slides through the sinker? You're going to be able to feel a fish bite better whenever that line is sliding through the sinker like that. Whenever you have a sinker that is permanently attached, then you're feeling the weight of the sinker and not so much the actual bite on the line. So I'll, I'll show you an example of that. Some places, some places sell sinkers like this that actually have a swivel on each end. So <clears throat> if you had your, your, your hook line coming off of one end and then your main line coming off of the other end, of that type of sinker, you're going to be feeling the sinker, the weight of the sinker, more than you're going to feel the fish bite. You know, I don't use a bead to protect the knot because I'm either eventually going to get hung up on a rock and I'm going to break off, or I'm going to hook into a big fish, he's going to hang me up, and I'm going to get broke off. So I don't mess around with beads. So next up we have the modification of the Freeline rig or the weightless rig, and that's done with a crimp weight or what's called a split shot. Now, if you can see that, how that's shaped, this is the type of weight that you, you crimp it onto your line, but on the back side, it has a place where you can actually crimp it, uh, squeeze it, and it'll come off your line. So let me put that on there. So I use these whenever I start out with a free line, and then there might be you know more current than what I had anticipated, and I want to get a little bit of weight on there to get my bait down deeper in the water column and I'm just going to crimp that on there with a pair of pliers or use my teeth. Once you get it crimped on, if you, you know, you can add more weight depending on the current or the depth of water, you know, how many weights that you need. But if you want to take the weight off, it's just as simple as pinching on the backside and the weight will come right off. So make sure you get the version of the split shot um, that you can take off your hook, the crimp weight. All right, so this next one is a pretty fancy rig that has several different ways that it can be rigged up. It's called a, a dropper rig. I've heard people call this a chicken rig when there's a couple of hooks on there. But basically what you're going to do, you, you've got the weight at the bottom of the rig and then your hooks are up here. And what makes this a great rig, I've been using this for sheep's head fishing, is because your weight is on the bottom, when you get a, a bite, you actually are able to feel the fish because you're not feel you can feel the weight of the weight but when you get a bite it's in between the end of your fishing pole and the weight so you can feel the bite better but there's a couple of different ways to rig up the hooks right here I've got the first hook put on right here I've got the first hook put on with a three-way swivel I tend to not use three-way swivels um, just because I think it's just more hardware for things to get tangled up in, right? For your line to get wrapped around and your hooks to get your other hooks to get hook, hooked on. So basically what I do is I just tie my hook on, right? Like this. And this is tied on with what's called a dropper loop, okay? Um, I don't necessarily use a dropper loop whenever I, I create my rig like this. That The knot is called a dropper loop. Um, I use more of what's called a surgeon's knot, where I just put the hook on there and I, I thread it through the loop about three times and then I pull it tight. So this is your, so that's what your, your, so that's what your drop rig looks like. You can have multiple hooks. I use this type of rig when I'm catching pinfish and when I want to have multiple hooks, like when I'm sheep's head fishing. So let me show you some variations on the sinker down here. So there's several different sinker types you can use with this rig, but most of them have some type of a loop that you can put the line through. It's a pyramid sinker here. 
And you can see that that type of sinker right there has the, the little loop on it as well. So on the bottom of the line where the sinker goes, let me take this sinker off and show you what I did. All right, so on the bottom of the line, I've just tied a loop on the bottom like that. The way you put your weight on is you take that loop, you slide it through the eye, you pinch it, you slide it through the eye of the weight. Once you slide it through, you open up that loop and then you put the weight through the loop, all the way through the loop like that, and then you pull it up tight to the eye that's on the sinker. And that way you can change your weights out. You can start out with, you know, half ounce if you want to change to an ounce or two ounces or three ounces. It's easy. You just grab the loop and then you push the weight back through the loop and you can take it off that way. Let me show you some variations of this. So one of your, one of your variations is going to be to use a snap swivel. The reason you use a snap swivel is so that if your weight gets hung up in the rocks, you can pull really hard, the snap swivel would bend out and it would just pull the weight off. So I'll show you what that looks like. You would just thread that through with your loop. Snap swivel would come through like that. Then you would snap your weight onto that like that. That's what that would look like. Yeah, oftentimes when you're fishing with heavy weights around structure, it's the weight that gets hung up. So, all right, let me show you another version of this that I saw recently at the jetties. Easily take this off by opening that loop, pulling all that back through the loop, and now I'm free to rig up with a different type of rig. So I saw this at the jetties the other day. The gentleman was actually just using a paper clip and he had taken a paper clip and slid it over his line that way. And then he had taken his weight and he slid his weight up on the paper hook clip like that. Probably a lot cheaper way to rig up your weights rather than using a snap swivel. This way, if your weight gets hung up, you can really apply a lot of pressure and pull hard. And of course, you know that these paper clips are going to bend out pretty easy, you know, with the more pressure that you put on them. So there are several different things that will determine the type of rig that you're going to be fishing with, right? Number one is going to be the type of fish that you are targeting. The second thing is going to be, what are the conditions like in the area where you are fishing? Is it deep? Is there a lot of current? Um, is the wind blowing really hard? Are there a lot of waves like if you were fishing on the beach? So let me give you some examples. Let's take um, whiting for, for an example, right? Let's say you go out on the beach, you're surf fishing for whiting, but it is a really super flat, calm day. No wind, no waves, right? There's really no reason to have a gigantic sinker unless you're gonna be casting your bait a very, very long way, right? And you could rig up several different ways in that type of situation, right? Flat, calm day, you could might be able to just get away with a split shot rig, something lightweight if you're not casting far. You could use a fish finder rig. You could double up on your hooks, use the dropper loop, loop rig. You could use a knocker rig, right? So, <clears throat> but if the conditions on the beach were really, really bad and the wind was blowing hard, right? Then you're gonna use some type of a spike sinker and you're probably gonna use the dropper loop rig or you're gonna use a very heavy pyramid sinker so that you'll be able to hold that bait in place or if you're fishing the, the beach where there's a lot of current, right? But here's another example. I mentioned snook fishing earlier. Snook tend to hang out in several different areas of the water column. I've heard that bigger snook hang, that, hang out on the bottom, right? Um, and the smaller snook in current tend to hang out on the top of the water. I have seen bigger snook hang out, you know, on the top of the water as well. In the current, what they do is they face into the current waiting for the bait to come to them, right? But I snook fish a lot just by free lining, okay? I'm, I'm in my kayak, I'm in shallow water, I'm around the mangroves, and I'm free lining those shrimp, 
those shrimp will just float through the current naturally, right? You got a live shrimp on there. Shrimp don't hang out on the bottom when they're, whenever there's fast current, right? Shrimp are basically floating through the current. So you're gonna use a free line or you're gonna use a free line with a, a split shot uh, whenever you want to present that bait in the most natural way as possible. When I snook fish with pinfish, I may have mentioned it earlier in the demonstration. Yeah, I did mention it. But oftentimes I will use a free line with pinfish because I know how to hook those pinfish to get them to di automatically dive down to the bottom. Pinfish tend to dive straight down to the bottom depending on how you hook them. So when I'm, yeah, and it, it just depends on the bait that you're using, right? If you're fishing with a mullet, mullet tend to be more of a surface type swimmers, right? They don't go way down deep in the water column. So if you want a mullet to get way down deep, you're probably going to have to use a weight. If you want a mullet to just swim naturally, you're going to use a free line. So these different rigs apply to different types of fish that we're fishing for and also the different types of conditions that we're fishing in. When I go fishing with Julio and we go down to a, a particular pier, right? There are a lot of people fishing. On that pier, we're using a heavy sinker. Number one, so that our bait doesn't swim over and get all tangled up into other areas. But the second reason is, is that there are very big snook hanging out in that pier area and they like to hang out on the bottom, right? So we're basically rigged up with like a fish finder rig or a knocker rig. Get that bait down there close to the bottom where those big snook are at. So you can see what I'm talking about, right? The different fish have different patterns where they hang out. So yep, water depth, the conditions, the current, the wind, and the different types of fish that you're fishing for are going to determine the type of rig that you or I or anybody else is going to be fishing with, right? So whatever fish you're targeting, study that type of fish. So you guys see me fishing with a knocker rig a lot. I love to fish with a knocker rig because it's just easy to rig. And when you get it hung up on the bottom, like I said, when you, when you jerk it, that sinker just slides all over and it knocks on the hook and it'll help get that thing unhooked off of whatever it is that it's hooked on. So the knocker rig and the fish finder rig definitely give you that sensitivity feel. If you've got a weight that is just tied on stationary and your line can't slip through that weight, you're not going to be able to feel the fish bite as well. So those are the different rigs and there's a little bit about, you know, why we use those rigs in different situations. So study up on the place that you're going to be fishing, find out what type of fish they're catching there and pay attention to the people that you're fishing around. Pay attention to that guy that is catching the fish. This morning I was at the jetties. There's a guy down there. He's always catching pompano and I was watching him from a distance, right? I was watching him. I was watching exactly how he was working that jig. He was just popping that thing really light. You know, I'm like, I'm trying to learn from somebody who has mastered how to catch pompano. So wherever you go, just go and study people. Watch what they're doing. All right, guys, thanks for watching this video. Thumbs up or appreciate it. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. Hit that bell icon. I upload videos a couple times a week and I try to upload quality content. So get out there and go fishing, man. Life is fun. Live it. See ya.